So here we're going to be talking about the definitions of acids and bases. There's three definitions that you need to know. First one is Arrhenius. Under Arrhenius, he said that acids are substances that donate a hydrogen ion in solution. So if you look at that reaction, HCl goes to chlorine ion, so it lost a hydrogen, while H2O gained a hydrogen. So in the reaction, HCl must be our acid since it lost or donated a hydrogen ion. Make sure that you write that equation and that you know that H3O plus is referred to as the hydronium ion. You may also want to write in your notes that H plus and H3O are the same thing. The only difference is H plus has the water removed from it. But anytime you see H plus or H3O plus, you're solving for the same thing, which is your hydrogen ion concentration. According to Arrhenius, a base is a substance that donates hydroxide ions in solution. So NaOH is a base because when it breaks up, it produces sodium ions and hydroxide ions. Another reaction you could see is sodium hydroxide plus hydrocyotic acid produces sodium cyanide in water. The hydroxide went with the hydrogen to make water, so sodium hydroxide broke up to give us hydroxide. In both reactions, sodium hydroxide was our base. But Arrhenius' definition was too narrow of a definition. It only included acids that started with hydrogen and bases that had hydroxide in it. bronston lowrys definition is a little bit more broad and it says that acids donate a proton in water solutions. Protons being hydrogen ions. So the definition of an acid is very similar for bronston lowry and Arrhenius. The real difference is when it, we're talking about a base. So a base is a substance that accepts a proton in water solutions. So we're only dealing with hydrogen or protons under bronston lowry Acids lose them, bases gain them. So let's look at these three reactions. To figure out what the acid and base is, you need to look on both sides of the reaction. But our acid and base are only going to be reactants. So HCl turns into chloride ion. So HCl, to get from the reactants to the products, has to lose a hydrogen or be an acid. H2O is going to turn into H3O+. Plus. So water must have gained a hydrogen ion because on the product side it has an extra one. So water then is our base. So if it loses a hydrogen, it's an acid. If it gains it, it's a base. Pause the video and try the next two on your own, restarting when you think you have it. So for the next one, NH3 turns to NH4, so it gained a hydrogen, and bases gain hydrogen. While water, in this case, lost a hydrogen, turning into hydroxide. If it loses a hydrogen, then it's going to be an acid. Finally, on the last one, H2PO4 negative turns to HPO4 negative 2, so it lost a hydrogen, making it the acid and hydroxide goes from hydroxide to water, so it gains a hydrogen, and when any time you gain a hydrogen, that means it's a base. Also with bronston lowrys definition is conjugate acid and bases. A conjugate acid, be careful because this one is the bottom one on your note packet, a conjugate acid is what the base becomes after it has accepted a proton. So it's going to act as an acid in the reverse reaction. So a conjugate acid is simply an acid in the reverse reaction. 
Conjugates are always going to be on the product side. So if you look at the picture, NH4 turns into NH3 if we go in the reverse reaction. A conjugate base, so there's in our NH4 plus, in the reverse reaction it turns into NH3, so it loses a hydrogen in the reverse reaction. Acids lose hydrogen and it's a conjugate because it's on the product side. Our conjugate base is what is left of the acid after it donates its proton. It's called a conjugate base because it is the substance which will, act, which will accept the proton or act as a base in the reverse reaction. So hydroxide ion is going to turn into water in the reverse reaction. So in the reverse reaction it's got to gain a hydrogen making it a base. Let's do the first one together. So we're going to be looking at what is similar. HF is similar to fluorine. They're separated by just a hydrogen. So to get from HF to F, I've got to lose a proton or a hydrogen ion. If that's the case, then HF must be the acid. In the reverse reaction, for fluorine to turn into HF, Fluorine's got to gain a proton. So fluorine is a base, and it's a conjugate base because it's on the product side. Water and H3O are similar, again, separated by just a hydrogen. Water's got to gain a proton to turn into H3O, so it's a base. And hydronium has to lose a hot proton to turn into water, so it's an acid, a conjugate acid since it's on the product side. You should also be aware of conjugate acid-base pairs. The orange, which was HF and fluorine, would be a conjugate acid-base pair, as are water and H3O. A conjugate acid-base pair are separated by only a hydrogen. If they're separated by more than just a hydrogen, such as two hydrogens or three hydrogens, they are not conjugate acid-base pairs. Go ahead and pause the video and try B on your own. Restart when you think you have it. So sodium hydroxide and water are similar to each other. This one's a little bit more complicated because we have the spectator sodium in there. If you want, you can scratch out the sodium and ignore it. And so OH turns into water. So we have one hydrogen to two hydrogens, which means OH must have gained a hydrogen, making it the base. Water is going to have to lose that proton in the reverse reaction to become hydroxide, so it's our conjugate acid. Carbonic acid is going to lose those hydrogens to become sodium carbonate, so it's an acid. And then our sodium carbonate is going to have to gain two hydrogens, so it's the conjugate base. Go ahead and pause the video, restart when you have these two done. On this one, NH4 to NH3, you should have gotten that NH4 plus was our acid and NH3 was our conjugate base. H2O you should have gotten was a base and H3O is the conjugate acid.
And you can see that those are separated by one hydrogen. Our acid lost a hydrogen, our base gaining that proton. In our bottom reaction, NH3 goes to NH4. So it's the base. HSO4 negative is our acid. NH4 conjugate acid and sulfate conjugate base. Go ahead and pause the video and try this last one on your own. You should have got an HCN is the conjugate acid. We add acid. This shall be our conjugate base. Base and then HCN is the conjugate acid then. When you're looking at the pair, the one with more hydrogens is always the acid of the pair. So we can quickly see out of acetic acid and acetate, acetic acid is the acid, and out of cyanide and HCN, HCN was the acid. The last definition of an acid and base is the Lewis definition. We talked about Lewis when we did Lewis dot structure, so of course his definition has to do with electron pairs. A Lewis acid is a substance that can accept an electron pair. The reason because acids are electron deficient. If they have a charge, they have a positive charge. Not all of them will have charges though. But if it has a positive charge, it's electron deficient and so it would need to accept an electron pair. Lewis bases donate an electron pair they're going to be electron rich or have a negative charge if they have a charge. So Lewis bases have either a lone pair of electrons on the central atom such as our picture below or they have a negative charge. So you may have to draw the Lewis structure if there's no charge. Here's an example where you need to identify the Lewis acid and Lewis base. There's no charges on either of these, but they have already drawn the reactants out for you. In H3, notice it has a lone pair, which would make it our Lewis base. BF3 needs electrons, which would make it the Lewis acid. How the Lewis acid base works is our boron needs electrons, so it's going to go over and share those electrons with NH3. And that's going to make one giant compound, which is NH3BF3. And now they're both stable. This would be the only definition that BF3 could possibly be an acid. Go ahead and pause the video and try these on your own, figuring out if they're Lewis acids or Lewis bases. So remember, a Lewis acid is electron deficient, so it has a positive charge while our Lewis base is going to be either negative or have lone pairs on the central atom. Well, hydronium has a positive charge, so it's going to be a Lewis acid. Fluorine has a negative charge, so it's going to be a Lewis base. If you've missed these, then go ahead and pause the video and retry those. Otherwise, continue on. NH3, or N negative 3 or nitrite ion has a negative charge so it's a Lewis base. PH3 doesn't have a charge so you need to draw that one out to see if it has a lone pair. It has eight valence electrons because phosphorus has five each hydrogen has one. Subtract six and we need two more on phosphorus as a lone pair. 
So that's what your Lewis structure should look like, which makes it a Lewis base due to the lone pair. Lithium ion is a Lewis acid, positive charge. NH3 we've seen about three times already. It looks just like pH3. So lone pair making it a Lewis base. NH4 is positive, so Lewis acid. Iron, acid, hydroxide, base. And the last one again, no charge, so you can't just look at that. You need to draw it out. Arsenic has five valence electrons. Chlorine has seven. So that gives us 40 altogether. Arsenic goes in the middle. Chlorines come off. Need to subtract 10 for our five bonds, giving us 30 left. Each chlorine gets six. So we do not have any lone pairs on the central atom. Lone pairs on the other atoms do not count, only central atom, which makes it a Lewis acid due to no extra electrons.